began to speak to me. Mana so brasque paratella, Tara Basse, Cade Mashe, Tara Basse, Tara Basse, Cade Bose, Tara Basse, Cade Mashe, Tadi, Ibrose, Cade Basse, Cade Bose, Tadi, Brasse, Cade Mashe, Cade Bose, Tadi, Brasse, Cade Basse, Tadi, Brasse, Cade Bose, Tadi, Cade Mashe, Tadi, Brasse, Cade Bose, Tadi, Brasse, Cade Bose, Tadi, Brasse, Cade His Majesty said, I know you have made some losses. He said, I know you've lost some things. But he said, I should tell you that he's the one in charge of your life. Hallelujah. He said, it does not matter the things you've lost. He said, I am in charge of your vessels. Yes, yes, yes. He said, it does not matter what you have lost all the years. He says, I am the God of all flesh. I am in charge of your vessel. Yes. And it took me to the story of Paul as they were sailing from Crete. They had lost virtually everything. But the Bible said that none of their lives will be lost. And I came to decree and prophesy as the one sent from God. No matter the storm. No matter the raging, no matter the things that you have lost, it will not take your life. Amen. It looks like your life is threatened now, but I prophesy it will not take your life. Amen. It will not take your life. Amen. Jesus is the captain of your life. Yes. It will not take your life. Amen. Begin to pray in the spirit in the Place. Amen. Let there be the fullness of your majesty. Amen. 
Let there be the fullness of your glory. Amen. Amen. Let us see the weight of your power today in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Holy Ghost, we ask that let there be the revelational power of your word today. Amen. Amen. Heal the sick, set the captives free. Amen. Amen. Set your press loose. Amen. Release men into their destinies. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For in Jesus' victorious name we have worshipped. Amen. Are you excited to be in God's presence today? Yes. If you are excited, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Your voice is looking for my trouble. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Shout hallelujah. Before you sit down, I'll be preaching to us on the secrets of lifting. I've spoken to us about five times on upliftment or four times. This is the fifth one. And today we'll be looking at the gift of men. Help me say to your neighbor, say the gift of men. The, the gift, gift of men. Ah, your voice is looking for my trouble. Say the gift of men. The, the gift, gift of, of men. men. Are you tired of me already? No, no sir. sir. Okay, let's read our anchor scripture. One to go. That's First Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. One to go. He raised it up the poor out of the dust. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them amongst what princes to make them inherit the throne of glory. Continue. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he had set the world. You can please sit down. God bless you. Child of God, as we study the life of Mordecai and Esther and the people that were Jews... We began to see one of the secrets of their lifting. And one of the secrets of the lifting of the Jews, especially Mordecai, was the gift of men. Are you still here? Yes, yes sir. And I will show you three points where he received the gift of men before I begin to teach us about the gift of men. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first one we'll see is when... Esther informed the king Ahasuerus about what Bigtan and Teresh had planned for him. Now we understand that Mordecai was a gate man that was seated by the gate. And there came a time and a season in the life of Mordecai and the people of the Jews that there was a man called Bigtan and Teresh. They planned to lay their hands on the king Ahasuerus. But this man Mordecai got the wind of it and informed Esther because he did not have the ability to go to the king directly. Now if you read your Bible in Esther chapter 2 verse 22, the Bible says, And the thing was known to whom Mordecai who told it unto Esther the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Meaning that when Esther went to tell the king, she did not say I was the one that found this. What she said was it was Mordecai that had. Now imagine if Esther never mentioned Mordecai's name. What would the king have remembered about him? Nothing. The first place we see the gift of men. Are you still here? Yes, sir. The second place, when the king asked, the Bible says in chapter 6, I believe, that there came a time, a night, that the king could not sleep. And he said the books of records should be brought to him. And this was a man that had challenges with sleeping. And I know that when people have challenges with their health to sleep, the next thing they do is not begin to read. They advise them to what? To sleep. But this time around, God changed the arrangement and the books were brought. And he's got to a point that he saw Mordecai's name. And he said, has anything been done for the person that saved the life of the king? And if you read your Bible in Esther chapter 6 verse 3. It says, and the king said, what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants, not just one person, that ministered unto him that there is nothing done for 
him. Now imagine when the king called out and said, has anything been done for Mordecai? Look at a group of people speaking one voice just to what? Help the destiny. What if those people did not like Mordecai or the devil was using them and they said he has been helped. In fact, he has been promoted from assistant gate man to being the chief gate man now. And do you know that would have been the end of the matter? Are you still here, church? Yes, sir. Now I prophesy over your life that everyone that should speak for your destiny, let the power of God force their mouth open Amen. up. Let the power of God force their mouth Amen. open up. Every group of people that should speak for your destiny, I decree that this week they begin to speak. Amen. This week they begin to speak. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now understand, child of God, there are times that people have proposed in their hearts to do something. They are just looking for one or two people to validate what is already in their mind. And they speak to a wrong person. And the person does what? He cancels everything with a wrong counsel. I decree that enemies of your destiny, they will not appear in the place of your destiny. Amen. When the matters of your destiny have been discussed, they will not be there. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me show you the third place that Mordecai and the Jews received the gift of men. You know a day had been picked when they would execute what? The Jews. Can you remember? Yes, sir. And the Bible began to tell us in Esther chapter 9 verse 3. The Bible says, And all the rulers of the provinces and the lieutenants and the deputies and the officers of the king did what? Helped the, the Jews. Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Now understand that the Jews could not be more than the people living in Shuzan. Now they were the people that were supposed to do what? To execute judgment. We are the same people that God used to do what? To help them. I decree over your life that everyone that has been sent against you, they are the ones that would all shine in your favor. Amen. Everyone that has been sent against your life, they are the ones that would all shine in your favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Child of God, every believer needs the gift of man. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Oftentimes, everything God does, he does it through men. Whether it's in your finance, God does it through men. If you have seen a situation that you woke up before and you saw God throwing dollars down, because I wouldn't want him to throw Naira if he was to throw anything, he should throw dollars. Have you seen any situation where God was throwing dollars before from heaven? No, I'm asking church, have you seen it before? No. Then how do people get blessed? It tells you that they get blessed through what? Through men. So no matter the financial favor you are praying for, God will always do it through men. God does the lifting of people's career through men. He does the lifting of ministries. He does it through men. So it will be an error for any believer not to have the gift of men. Are you still here? Yes, the assignment of men that are gifts is to help your life. Meaning if anybody enters your life and your life does not get better, you don't become, your life doesn't become easier. Your life does not become more productive. That person is not a gift. Are you still here? Yes, sir. So for young people now that you are considering marriage now, since that man or that woman have entered your life, has your life become more productive? So you should know by now if that person is a gift to your life or not. Some of you are still asking God. God, I'm praying, I'm praying. Because you are looking for a deceptive spirit to lie to you. Since he entered your life, your life has become worse. Your prayer life has gone down. You don't read the Bible again. You are doubting God now. And you are still wanting to find out what God is saying about the person. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God is not wicked. Neighbor, God is not Your voice is looking for my troubles. Say, neighbor, God is not wicked. Neighbor, God is not wicked. Do you know that most of the times what God will allow for your lifting is already around your life? 
Do you understand what I just said? Yes, sir. Most of the time, everything that God will use to lift you is already in or around your life. But the challenge is most believers, our eyes in the spirit is not open. And that's why you will find out that people are praying to God for God to answer things he had answered five years ago just because their eyes were not open. I'll show you from scripture. Are you still here? Yes, now, the Naaman and the slave girl in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 14. Can you remember that story? Yes, now, Naaman was a leper and he needed God to do what? To heal him of the leprosy. The person that gave him the information about a prophet in Samaria, what was the person living? In his house. Did he need to go outside to find that information? No, God is not wicked that what you need for your life, he goes to hide it in Meduguri, he goes to hide it so that your life, all through your life you cannot find it. That is not God. He puts it where you can find it. But most of the time our gaze is on other things. Have you not found out that when most people want to marry, they don't like to marry the people that are around them. Have you not found out? We just like to go and look for that one that is far, that we bring problems from very far places. Problems that you can't find solution to. Because all around you, you just like to show. Because our mentality is that for us to get anything, it has to be difficult. But that's not God. Can you remember the story of the axe head? Yes, Are you sir. still here, church? Yes, sir. Can you remember the story of the accent? Oh, yes. Now, the one of them said in 2 Kings chapter 6, said that this place that we are is too straight for us. Let every man take a beam and let's go and do what? Expand this place. And one of them said, oh no, don't let's go alone. That one had spiritual intelligence. He said, let's go with the man of God, Elisha. And Elisha said, no problem, let's go together. And as they were felling the tree, what happened? The axe head did what? Fell into what? And one shouted, alas, master, it was what? It was borrowed. Where did the help come from? Did they go and look for it? Was Elisha not the help already with them? Yes, sir. So child of God, lots of the times the gift of men is around you. It's just that you don't have what it takes to see them. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Can you remember 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 3? The woman that her husband died and they came to take the children. And the Bible says that she had what? Little what? Oil. Oil in her what? In her house. Now, does it not tell you that what God used to change our story had always been in our house? Yes, sir. Hey, sit down, everybody. Sit down. Hello, sit down. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Are you listening to me? Yes. Now, what God needed to listen face here, what God needed to change the life of that woman was already where? In our house. God did not need to go anywhere. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus that everything that God needs to change your life, let it gain expression now. Begin to find it now. Begin to find it now. Begin to find it now. To find it now. In the name of Jesus. Now the oil was there, but it required a man to come and give what? Announcement to that oil. The oil had always been there, but they did not see it. It required what? A prophet to come. There are people that enter your life. Are you listening to me? Yes, and your skills begin to gain expression. There are people that enter your life and your talents begin to gain expression. There are people that enter your life and all the graces of God begin to gain expression. And I came to prophesy that anybody that needs to enter your life for your giftings to gain expression, they enter now by fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. Child of God, some things don't work till some people enter. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That oil was a useless oil till who entered? Elisha entered. And I prophesy as the one sent from God that 
from now, men that will give your life relevance, they enter into your life. In the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. Men are gifts. Men are solutions. Men are conduits. Men are bridges. Men are doors. Men are keys. Do you understand what I just said? Men are gifts. There are people that enter into your life and it's as if immediately a million dollars entered your life. Because when God brings them into your life, how they enter, they came as a financial relief to your destiny. Without begging them, you just discover that at every point of your life that there's financial pressure, God uses them to release something to you. There are men that are gifts like that. There are men that are solutions for every challenge in your life. As long as they are in your life, it just looks as if that they have one wise counsel that brings solution. Have you not met people like that? Yes, sir. Oh, you don't have people like that in your life. Ah, then you need prayer if you don't have people like that in your life. That all around you, just talk to them. There is always a solution that comes from them. They may not give you money, but what they are giving you in terms of counsel will produce what money cannot produce. Men are conduits. What God is doing in heaven, he channels it from himself through a man to another man. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Do you know that when God calls a man, do you know it's God that does the calling? Yes, sir. Are you still here? Yes, sir. It's God that does the calling. Yes, but why sir. does he still allow for ordination? Now I'm asking you, why does he say? Because he knows that there are certain graces that cannot come to you till hands have been what? Laid up. So he's the one that did the calling, but he will commission you the same way he commissioned Elisha through the vessel of what? Another man. I long to say you that I may what? Impart some spiritual graces to you. That was Apostle Paul talking. Why didn't he say pray that God will give it to you directly? So there are things that cannot happen in your life till certain men enter your life. And this is the arrogance of the believer. I have God and God is enough for me. This is why many people are suffering today. Is it that God is not all powerful? He's all powerful. But there are things he will not do by himself. Are you still here? Sir. Three keys to unlocking the gift of men. Are you still here church? Yes, sir. The first one is discernment. Let me say to your neighbor, say discernment. discernment. I cannot hear you say discernment. discernment. Now, this is one of the most powerful spiritual gifts any believer will need for his or her own life. Discernment is the most powerful gift any believer should desire. You should desire it before the working of miracles. You should desire it before what power. I know lots of us as believers, we want to pray, we want to lay hands on the sick, they recover, we want to wave our hands and miracles happen, people fall under the anointing. It's a good thing, but that is secondary. Discernment is the gift that works in the life of the believer by himself and for himself. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Child of God, so many people are around you daily, but who amongst them is your helper? Don't you find people around you every day? We do. But does it mean that everybody that is around your life is your helper? No, sir. no. So what does it take to identify the one that is your helper amongst them? Is what? It is discernment. Because even the devil masquerades himself what? As the angel of light. So you will find many people around you. But you can tell, no, this is not the one. This is not the one. This is not the one. This Okay, this one is what? Is the one that God has sent to my life. Child of God, if your eye is not open in the spirit through discernment, the people God sent to your life will come and they will go and you will not recognize them. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Do you know that the people that God sent to your life, usually, they don't look like it at the first appearance. Yes. Are you still here, church? Yes, sir. I said the people God sent to your life, lots of times at face value, and at the first encounter, they don't do what? They don't, they look, don't look like, like it. it. And child of God, it's an error to think that all your gift of men and destiny helpers must be your friend. Who says so? They don't have to be your friend. A destiny helper is somebody that is sent on a divine assignment to do what? To make your
your life easy. They are compelled by the force of grace and the force of heaven. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know, sometimes when the military are sent to a particular city to go and to keep peace, are you, are you still here to keep yes, peace? Sir. Now, the military, do they go because they particularly love the people? No, sir. Why do they go? An instruction has been given to what? To them to activate that thing. So they are men. All they need is God's instruction. Don't be bothered whether they are friends or not. In fact, God can use your enemy as an helper of destiny. You don't understand what I just said? Yes. I said God can use what? Your enemy. Your enemy as what? Your, your helper, helper of, of destiny. destiny. Now, can you remember the story of Penina and Anna? I've said this a long time ago. Can you remember that story? Yes, the Bible says Penina mocked Anna to Saul. Made jest of Anna. Mocked her. And Anna was terribly sorrowful and all of that. But if you go to the next chapter and verse 27, the Bible says what? For this child I did what? I, I prayed. Meaning that Anna's prayer life came on fire because somebody did what? Annoyed her, provoked her. And by that prayer altar, Samuel was birthed. So it is you that think everybody needs to be your friend. Should you have friends? Yes. But the agenda is who has God sent? If God has sent you, then you must get here. Oh, yes. Are you still here? Yes, sir. The maid of Naaman didn't look like anybody that divine help could come out of. She had no education. She had no rich background. She had no pedigree. Child of God, be careful who you write off too quickly. Are you still here? Yes, sir. That maid had what? No background. Had no education. She did not look like anything that should be celebrated. She looked like a child that should just be kept at the backside of life. Child of God, don't write anybody off too quickly. This has been the danger of many believers. We write people off. That this one, even if God will do all the miracles, nothing can happen in the life of this one. Who told you? Out of that same Nazareth, Jesus still did what? Came out and they said, what thing can come out of this Nazareth? But a Jesus still came out of that Nazareth. Higher. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 2. Now imagine if they had written off that little maid. Maybe Naaman would have just died of what? Of leprosy. leprosy. Did it mean that the power of God was not available at that time to cure leprosy? No, Does it mean that the servant of God was not there to cure leprosy? No, but the person that God will first use has been written off. I agree that those that have written you off, God will use you to shine before them. Those that have written you off, God will use you to shine before them. Those that have written you off, God will use you to shine before them. In the name of Jesus. I've spoken about 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2. Let's read it now. The Bible says, And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save what? A pot of... Now the woman said there was what? Nothing in the house. Meaning that even that oil, she had counted it as what? As nothing. That oil was a totally written off package. There are people in your life that you have written off like that. That you have said this one can never. You have looked the length and breadth of your life. And you have said that this one can never produce anything good for my life. Child of God, don't be too quick. That person might be in a dormant season. That the timing God has prepared for that person is still in the future. All the previous oil that were used. Are you still here, child of God? Yes, sir. All the previous oil that were used in that house, that was their timing. This other oil, its own timing was for very crucial moment. Do you know, even that oil that was forgotten, if this woman was to thank the oil, look back and say, let me begin to thank all the oil I've used. Which one do you think she would thank the most? Is this last one that saved our world, our destiny. So don't write people off. Are you still here? Yes, sir. What is discernment? Discernment, this is the ability to judge well in the spirit. This is the ability to accurately predict the workings and the move of God in the realm of the spirit. 
Now let me tell you three aspects of discernment very quickly. The first one is knowing what God has done in the spirit or what God is doing in the spirit. You know there are lots of believers that are just living their life. They don't either know what God has done. Or neither do they know what God is trying to do around their life. Meaning that for you now, God can give you a job now. And getting that job, he did not send you there for salary. He sent you to only meet five people. So that he knows that these five people, in another 20 years, there will be access to the president for you. But you went to that office, your eyes were blind. You didn't know why God took you there. You earned all the salary, but none of those five people are your friends today. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It's blindness in the spirit. You need to know, I'm walking in this office. Why did God bring me here? I have found myself in this situation of life. Why did God bring me here? Nothing happens without what? The permission of God. There are people that go through challenges. Serious challenges. And God lets them know. I am allowing you go through this challenge. So that in five years time. When you begin to tell. Or you begin to tell your story. I can have a harvest of souls. That say that if a man's life that was this bad. Glory can still come out of his life. Then there is hope for me. So that person already knows why God allowed him. But some of you will go through that situation. Suffer for nothing. Come out of it. And your life still does not make a meaning. Are you still here? Yes, sir. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So child of God, do you know whom you have believed? Do you know what God is doing in the spirit about your life? What time zone are you now in the spirit? What is happening about your life now in the spirit? It's not enough to come to church. But what is God doing with your life at this time? Most believers are not aware. And that's why a believer can live 5-10 years and say that this Christianity is not working. It will not work because you are not living life in the spirit. All you're living is in the flesh, is in the body. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, All you know is life in the body. Life in this realm. If you begin to live in the spirit, there are certain things that you will know about God and about your life that by the time you enter certain seasons, your discernment will be sharp and precise. Are you still here? Yes, the next thing is to knowing the time. Knowing the time. There are things that God has programmed into your life that will manifest in years to come. There are people that God brings to your life now. If you are not discerning enough, you will think that they are useless to you. Whereas they are not useless to you. They are only brought in now for 19, 18, 15 years to come. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Look at the story of that oil. That oil was useless all along to that woman. However, she did not know that God was saving that oil for what? A future date that it will become relevant. There are people God has brought in your life now. You better don't throw them away. You better keep them. God has brought them for a time what? In the future. Imagine if that woman looked at that oil and just looked at it. What nonsense is this? And just, when the prophet came and said, what do you have now? What would she have said? Truly what? Nothing. And the prophet might have told her that I don't do magic. I do what? Miracles. You understand? There must be something what? In your hand for me to perform it. So it's not, if you have discernment, it's not every friendship that is not working now that you throw away. There are some friendships that are one-sided now. Trust me, child of God, if you are discerning, some of those friendships might tilt the other way later in five years' time. You know, I was listening to a preacher in this nation and he was preaching and he saw one of the brothers in the congregation and he called him out. And he said, oh, you people don't know him, don't worry. 
He said, some 15 or 10 years back, we used to pray together. He said there was nothing. In fact, when we fast and fast and pray, and we want to break, and want to break with Gary, he said he was the one that used to even buy the Gary because I could not afford it. He said, but look at what God has done for me now. He now told him, he said, because I have seen you today, you are a house owner, you are a car owner. You, in fact, I'm going to give you another house that you would also use for rent in just one meeting. But while he was buying the gari and paying, did the friendship not look one-sided? It does. But discernment. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Am I wasting your time? No, sir. The third thing is knowing the people God sent to your life. You can have discernment. You can know that this person uh, may be future. Yes, you are having hope. But knowing the exact people God has sent to your life. This one takes high level discernment. Can I show you a few people in the scriptures? Now, the first story is Mary Magdalene. You know, the Bible tells us that Mary Magdalene was the one that seven demons were cast out of her. Are you still here, church? Now, can I read a scripture to you? Luke chapter 8 verse 2 to 3. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Eros steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their word, of their son. So this was a woman that was possessed of the devil. But Jesus already had the discernment that this one is a financier for my ministry. While you were seeing demons, he was seeing something more than demons. If you were the pastor, you would have told that. Both you, your demons and your money, just get away. I don't want problem in my life. But Jesus already was seeing beyond what they were seeing. How would somebody possessed of the devil be one of the helpers of Jesus' ministry? Does it look normal? No, sir. But discernment. Now understand that sometimes when God wants to bring people into your life, he does not bring them based on your request. He does not bring them based on how you think. He brings them based on who he is as God and what you need in your life. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Have you read the story in Mark chapter 5? Of the madman of Gadara. Church, are you still here? Yes, sir. The madman of Gadara. Now, the Bible says that that man had blocked certain streets and nobody was able to pass. And that day, Jesus was passing and Jesus looked at that man. Do you know Jesus could have decided to pass him by and go? He couldn't have stopped Jesus. Because the, and in fact, Jesus was the definition of anointing. So there was no way he would have stopped him. But do you know the interesting thing about the story? Was that after Jesus had cast out that devil of madness. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 5 verse 20. That the madman went into what? Decapolis. To publish what Jesus had done. Do you know what Decapolis means? The man went into ten cities talking about the ministry of Jesus. The ones that were with Jesus, are they gone to 10 cities yet? Discernment. So he was not just looking at the madness. He was looking that this one would be profitable for me in ministry. All I need to do is to get that devil out of him. And 10 cities will have a revival because of just one person. Are you still here? Yes, sir. So knowing the people God has, I decree over your life by the spirit of the living God. Everyone that has God has sent to your life, you will recognize them. Yeah. You will recognize them. Yeah. You will recognize them. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. The second thing about receiving the gift of men is humility. Let me tell your neighbor, say Humility. Your voice is looking for my trouble. Say humility. humility. I'll read two scriptures to you and I'll explain that. James chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth what? Grace to the humble. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6. The Bible says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. That he may do what? Exalt you in due time. 
Humility is not believing that you are superior to others. Many people are unable to receive the gift of men because of high-handedness, ego, pride, and inability to honor all men. Let me explain that to you in a bit. Now, do you know that the maid that was in Naaman's house, when she suggested that thing, what she deserved was to be slapped by Naaman. That's, in fact, you are so jobless that you discovered that a guy has leprosy. You are not working. Because she would have, he would have looked at it that this girl is too beneath me to be advising me. What does this girl, this was the girl that we brought into captivity. And she's even referring me what kind of arrogance. But do you know this is the lifestyle of many believers. It, we will, some people will rather die than to take the counsel because of the person it is coming from. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Somebody can just sleep and say, ah, sir, I'm sorry. But I saw that when you slept, you had a stroke. You say, stroke? Out of all the good things God is doing, it's only stroke you saw. You have a bad spirit. You have a very bad spirit. And the lady shuts up and goes. And two months later, you are on the hospital bed. You can't even explain what happened to you. Because what? You didn't have humility to receive that helper. That helper looked like she was too, or he was too beneath you. Now, the story was said to us of a man of God while I was in school. And he was ministering. And a lady, after the service, met him and said, Man of God. I saw that as you were preaching, you were wearing white. He said, and she said, and suddenly, as you were putting on that white, I began to see black stains everywhere on the white. I began to see black stains everywhere. Sir, I think you need to pray and all of that. And the man said, you have a very bad spirit. In a service like that, and the power of God was everywhere. Look at what you are saying. This is the last time you should talk to me in this church. You understand what I'm saying? Keep quiet. And he walked away. And that was how the lady forgot about it. And trust me, not far from then, his church was doing well. His church promoted him and took him abroad to another church. And he was doing well seemingly. And one day, the devil fired the arrow of lust into his life. And he had wife and he had children. Before he knew it, he married another wife. And the church suspended him. While on suspension, they brought him back to Nigeria. He married another wife. And all. And one day he saw that woman. And he remembered the prophecy that she gave. That she saw him ministering. And one, an arrow was fired at him. And his garment became stained. And then he broke down and realized that this woman has said, If only he was humble enough to receive the gift of that woman. A prophecy. And had gone to pray. Maybe nothing would have happened to him. Do you know there are some of us. We will rather die than to believe that somebody beneath us is the one that wants to help. You know we are here in church now. Some of us. And this is to pastors. Are you listening to me? You find a believer ministering here. But you believe I have graces. I have gone. So what they are praying. What they are talking about. It makes no meaning. Sir. Don't be too sure. God can speak through anybody. Nobody, we have only the privilege to stand here to minister. Nobody has the monopoly of God. He chooses who he wants to talk to when he wants to talk. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, I've had people meet me here in this same church and she would say to me, there's a particular sister, she would always say to me, Pastor, I saw this and saw this. So this time around, when she called me, she said she saw, even it was a good thing. She said, I saw this and all of that. So and after she said it, I said, pray for me. She first paused. She laughed. He said, no, pastor, you are the one to pray. I said, no, you are the one that God did what? Should. So use that same anointing to do what? But it hasn't stopped me from being a pastor. But some people will rather die. You know that this brother has the gift that if he lays hands on you, that sickness will go. But you look at him, who is he? Who is he? Lay hands on me. Child of God, go and buy your coffin if you are not ready to be humble. Don't stress us to buy it for you. Buy it yourself. Because that is inevitable. If you will not allow humility to enter your heart, that is inevitable. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Look to your neighbor, say you are not God. You are not God. I didn't hear you say you are not God. You are not God. 
He can choose the person to use. Now, have you read the story of, am I wasting your time? No, have you read the story of the axe head? The axe head. The axe head, when it fell into water, what did Elisha say they should bring for him? A stick, a stick right? Yes, and he threw the stick and what happened? Child of God, try it when you get home. Throw a stick inside water for metal to come up. Does he not tell you that there are some things that look impossible, but God still chooses to do them? So this is the problem of the believer. If it were you, you would argue, no, stick can never float metal. But with God, he can still do the impossible things. He can bring your helper from anywhere. Be humble enough to accept his means and his ways. Have you not read the story of Laban and Jacob? Yes, sir. Who was paying who's salary? Laban. Laban was paying Jacob's salary. In, in fact, we remember that the Bible says that his salary was reviewed downwards. How many times? Ten, Ten times downwards. So we knew who had the cash. It was Laban. Jacob had nothing. He didn't have any cash. He just had the presence of God on his life. Genesis chapter 30 verse 27. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me because of, for what? For thy sake. Child of God, this was the person paying somebody's salary. But he had come to the humility of art to know that what? That no, I am not the one that has the anointing for this thing. There is somebody that has an hot spot of glory that is around. You know some of you, why you are using is hot spot glory? You don't know. Somebody just turn on hot spot like glory. If the person walks out of your life, glory ends. There are some of you, the people that should be in your life, you've allowed them to turn off their hot spots. They've left your life. Now shame is what is left. Laban was the one paying salary, but he knew the difference. He knew that the blessing was different from cash. He knew the person that they had. I decree over your life that pride will not kill you. In the name of Jesus. Child of God, they may not be in your class, but they can still be your helper. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. So all these, they are not in my class and all of that. Before you use that pr pride to drive people, they may not be in your class, but they can be your helper. Slave girl was not in the class of Naaman. Are you still here? Yes, sir. They may not have it, but does not mean that they cannot be your destiny helper. Now, did you read that story of the woman with the oil well? The neighbors of that woman, did they, did they have oil to give her? No. But they had vessels. Yes, sir. Do you understand what I just said? Yes, sir. They didn't have oil, but they had what? Vessels. Vessels. Imagine when the prophet said, go to your neighbors. Go and get vessels. And she gets there and nobody had vessels to give. Or imagine if her character was bad like some of you. Like if God told you that on your streets your helper is there, would you still be helped? If God told you that in your choir department is where your help is, will you still be helped? If God told you in prayer band is where your helper is, will you still be helped? If God told you your church is where, will you still be helped with this character of yours? They may not look like they have it, but they can have something in the process of your lifting. Those people didn't have the oil, but they had what? Vessels. Are you still here? I've told you two things now. The last one in the process of the gift of men is take action. Let me say to your neighbor, say take action. Now the prophet had made oil available. When he made oil available, that was just a part of the miracle. The concluding part of the miracle was what? Go and sell it. Are you still here? Yes, sir. So there are many of us, we have received prophecy. We have met the destiny helper. We have received information. We have received counsel. We have received idea. But the problem now is you are not taking any action that will lead to upliftment. Now, after the maid had told Naaman that there is a prophet in, a, in, in Samaria called who Elisha, what happened? Naaman went to Samaria. Some of you, you've been given prophecy, you have met the helper, but there is nothing else you are doing. It is time to do what? Take action over everything God has said to you. The prophet said what? 
go and sell what? The oil. Child of God, if you have skill, it is time to sell that skill. If you have graces, it is time to sell that grace. If you have talents, it is time to do what? To sell it. Market what God has given to you. After all the helpers have come to your life, what is the final point? Is for you to do what? To sell it, market it and let your life move forward. Some of you, the prayer God has answered five years ago, you are just content praying. You are still praying about it. Take action. Let me look to your neighbor say, take action. Take action. Your voice is looking for my trouble. Take action. Take action. Are you ready to pray? If you are ready to pray, please stand to your feet. Have you been blessed? Begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to pray in the spirit. Anaka baraka tabada gabayadas. Iprata sela donde barakatia. Arevevanda kabaraka tausia. Eko praka tabada gatabada gayaganas. Arose baraka tanda gabay. Eko paraka tabada gabayadas. Eleso praka tabada gayadas. Ipraka tabada gayadas. Isagaban de Rushakai, Ekefrata, Ipradosa, Iprakata, Esokoto, Rasegede, Iko Prakata, Mananasha, Eleto Sapreta, Arata Kamanagama, Erata Sap, Every set your spirit on fire, get ready to pray. Aro Sharapanagama, and Avalatai, and O Sakaparakata, thirty more seconds, pray the spirit. Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Arapato shakapalata kabada kabada kabayas. You will shout, my father, my father. Your voice is looking for my trouble, my father, my father. Open my eyes, let me see my helpers. Open my eyes, let me see my helpers. Somebody fire prayer now. Church of God, is this how you pray? 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 Ako parata kavada gavayata, eropatia da gavayata, eko shavra da gata. Only God open my eyes, 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 open my eyes. Somebody fire prayer. Let the Holy Ghost open your eyes. Let the Holy Ghost open your eyes. Open my eyes that I may see. 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 I want to see my helpers. I want to see my helpers. I roll shaka parata. Eko prata. Eko baraka telatosia. Isaka baratia. Eke parakata. E no shaka bada. E rekata. Kosata, Erekata, Ikabanagaba, Erapata, Ikopayata, Inamanakata, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. I want to see my airpods. I want to see my airpods. I want to see my airpods. In the For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. Child of God, I'm asking you to pray now. I can see some of you. You are acting as though you control the realm of the spirit. Now, let me tell you this for free. I'm a pastor and the spiritual is our work field. Nobody is compelled by your grammar. Yes, sir. Nobody is compelled by your tears. Yes, sir. Anybody that has not been compelled by heaven can never help you. That's right, sir. There are times five people send you text messages. Help me, help me, help. One sends more compassionate one. You still don't help. The one that sends it even as if he sent it arrogantly, you still help. Why? There is a place that you have been compelled in the spirit. And child of God, this is why we ask you to pray. So that tomorrow, when your neighbor in church rises, you don't say he did blood money. We know what he did, he prayed. 
You have your destiny in your mouth now. Some of you are quiet. And you go through the week suffering. You go through the week crying. You go through, now that you have the ability to cry before God, you are quiet. You take that prayer again. You will shout, my father, my father. My father, my father. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me see my helpers. Let me see my Open, my Open my eyes. Let me see my helpers. Open my eyes. Let me see my helpers. Open my eyes. Let me see my helpers. Somebody fire prayer now. Fire prayer. Echo porota kabada he go prataka vayadas. He let wata feratia. He go pratila ta. He na 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 kavayagada. He rosiata. He tayato bradisa. He sakwata. He pradeka ta. He shakamanatia. He seka bradiga ta. He rakata. He soko prata. He frakata. He na ta kavay. My eyes open. 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 My eyes open, 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 open to your helpers, my eyes open, see 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 your helpers, my eyes open, my eyes open, my eyes open, my eyes open. Open a rota tatabai, a barusha capata, a repata, a rasso precata, a repata, a namana shakapai, a popa precata, a zephrata, a lucy gatelapo, a tayata, a capayata. My eyes open, my eyes open. Only ghost, let me see my elba. Only ghost, let me see my elba. Only ghost, let me see my elba. He knows separatia, a repatu. God just spoke to me now that reverse that prayer. Let my helper see me. Because if you you see them, and it, are they the, are, who needs the help? Is it not you? Yes, so they are the ones that need to see me now. You understand what I'm saying? You will shout, My father, my father. My father, my father. I, prophesy I prophesy that now, now my helpers see me. Help now my helpers find me. Somebody fire prayer. My helpers find me. My helpers see me. 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 Oh, Ratakata, a Shepherdia, a Bredusaka, in Nakapayata, a Keparatosa, in La Rondara, in Shakaparadia, a Rasopai. My helpers find me. 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 still here. Yeah. You want to ask God that put my matter on the mind and the lips of my helpers. The Bible says there came a night the king could not sleep. Out of everything that needed to be done, why was it Mordecai's matter? He was a man of prayer. So you want to shout now, my father, my father, your voice needs some spiritual energy. My father, my father, put my matter on the minds, on the mind, and the lips of my helpers. Put my matter on the mind and the lips of 
of my airport, put my matter on the mind and the leaves of my airport. Somebody fire prayer. If Pradata and Rasota, my air pass your mind is full of me. Your lips is full of me. My mind, oh God, the mind of my helpers, the mind of my helpers is full of me. The mind of my helpers is full of me. The lips of my helpers is full of me. Somebody fire prayer. Fire, 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 fire. Ora pato patiata, i gabayata, e keporonta, i sapwata, e koprata, i gabayata. My matter is on the mind of my helpers. My matter is on the mind of my helpers. My matter is on the lips of my helpers. My matter is on the lips of my helpers. My matter is on the lips of my helpers. My matter is on the mind of my helpers. My mind ties on the mind of my helpers. Fire prayer 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. My matter is on the mind of my helpers. My matter is on the mind of my helpers. My matter is on the lips of my helpers. My matter is on the lips of my helpers. My matter is on the lips of my helpers. If you are a business person here, I'll take that prayer again, but you'll pray it well. You know that when your matter is on the lips of your helpers, advert is not necessary. Oh, you don't know? You don't know? When people begin to market you aggressively as though they have an interest in it. You understand? That's God that has put what? Your matter. Not just on the mind, but what? On the lips of men. If you are in business, I want you to cry out with everything. That Father put my matter on the lips of men. If you are in career, you can cry out as well. If you are in ministry, you can cry out as well. Whatever thing, Holy Ghost put my matter on the lips of men, on the lips of men. Put my matter on the lips of men. Divine recommendation, 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 divine recommendation. Somebody fire prayer. Fire prayer. Divine recommendation. My matter on the lips of men. 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 Asakayata Baratia, Eko Ravatia, Empre Suprata, Erusha Dada, Erna Suprata, my matter on the lips of men. Thirty more seconds. My matter on the lips of men. My matter on the lips of men. My matter on the lips of men. To give you the last prayer now. I want you to pray it with everything that you have. All eyes closed, lift up your two hands. You want to pray it with everything that you have. And the prayer is simple. My father, I receive the gift of men now by fire. I receive the gift of men now. This is not a time to look at anybody. Just lift your two hands up. Are you ready to pray? You shout, my father. my father, I receive, I receive the, gift of men. the gift of men, now by fire, 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 somebody fire prayer now. 
receive it now. Lift up your hands and receive it. Receive it now. Receive the gift of man. Receive the gift of man by fire. Holy Ghost, release the gift of man. 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 Ratu Shadabatia, Ebrate Shota Tikatai, Egesu Fratayana. Holy Ghost, release the gift of man. Release the gift of man. Release the gift of man. Holy Ghost, release the gift of man. Holy Ghost, release the gift of man. Holy Ghost, release the gift of man. Somebody fire prayer. Let the gift of man come as fire. 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 Receive the gift of man. 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 Receive the gift of man by fire. Receive the gift of man. I receive the gift of man. I receive the gift of man. I receive the somebody fire prayer. Fire prayer. I receive the gift of man. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I receive the gift. I receive the talk to God in prayers. Scream it like you mean it. Scream it like you mean it. Scream it like you mean it. The gift of man. The gift of man. Let them come in a hurry. They 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 come in a hurry. I ya go takatai. I go see a dog. I protosha. I natai. I kapaya. I porasa. I rusa. I nata. I kapaya. I kosha. I prata. They come in a hurry. Lift up your two hands, all eyes closed. I want to speak now as the one sent from God. God just said to me that some of the helpers have been tied like the coats. So I want to prophetically loose them now. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I come by the spirit of him that sent me. I come by the power of Yeshua Mashiach. I come with the voice of the prophets. I lift up the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. Anywhere your destiny helpers have been tied to, I command them be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose by fire. 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 I lose your destiny, help us now. I release your destiny, help us now. I release your destiny, help us now. In the name of Jesus. The Lord just said some of them have been blindfolded. So even if they leave, they can't recognize you. And I come by the spirit of him that sent me. I decree every spiritual veil on the eyes of your helper. I command them to tear by fire. Let them tear by fire. Let them tear by fire. Every demonic veil on the eyes of your helper. Now they catch fire. They fall off like scales now. They fall off like scales now. In the name of Jesus. God just said somebody's bills shall be paid. I don't know who you are, but I decree as the voice of God. Let your bills be paid. 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 
Ratakosiata, Erusha Dagabaya, Ipratelatosia, Maneso Prakita, Eratayatapa, Inagata, Erabaton Shada, Ekebrakatisana, Ibrakatayana. I enter into the office of my calling. And I decree your bills are paid in the name of Jesus. This week I decree by the spirit of the living God. That your story shall be more than enough. Your story shall be more than enough. Your story shall be more than enough. In your business, more than enough. In your career, more than enough. In your family, more than enough. In your health, more than enough. In your finance, more than enough. I speak as the one sent from God. It's your week of more than enough. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. God bless you.